they said they wanted it to be a place of rest, recreation, entertainment, in one of the finest natural parks in the country. And, and we think the bones to make that happen are still existing in the park. This is a, a fabulous facility uh, as a community. And having done lots of parks, we think you're very fortunate to have this facility in your community. Um, and so we've created what I'll call a very aggressive plan. We've, we've, we, we're we're going to encourage you to stretch and to work hard to, to get the park to a point where um, it, it will reach its full potential. And it's going to take time. I mean, our estimate is going to take 10 to 20 years for you to get to that point. And I think that's a realistic time frame. Um, it's very difficult today in the biggest economic recession we've seen uh, since the Great Depression to think about things like this. But from what we've seen in trends across the country, close to home park and recreational facilities are even more important in tough economic times where people can't travel great distances. And, and close to home facilities become even more important. Uh, so again, uh, this is a vision uh, you may not achieve everything in the master plan over time, but we think you can achieve most of those things. And uh, we hope that as we refine the plan in the next few months, uh, we look at those things. Thanks, Pete. Uh, my name again is Brian Steich. I'm the project manager uh, for the Coleman Memorial Park Master Site Plan. And what I'm just going to give you an overview of some of the, the basically, it's the, the overall riding theme that's going to to the park and, and uh, contribute and be woven into all the, uh, the future uh, development plans. But uh, to, to take a step back, the, the, uh, the park itself is, is full of either uh, re remaining historical artifacts or the locations of what was uh, formerly the, the Coleman family estate, uh, which included a number of mansions and also associated buildings. Uh, this plan here identifies where uh, the existing ones are, as well as the ones that have been uh, raised. Most of the, the uh, mansion sites were raised in the, the late uh, 30s, shortly after the park was uh, deeded to the city in the DPF. Uh, yeah. The uh, most prominent of the mansions was obviously the, the G. Dawson Coleman Homestead Mansion site, which sits at the top uh, of, the, of what was formerly known as Mount Lebanon. Uh, this is an aerial photograph showing where the, uh, the, the former uh, building, where the mansion site was. And you can see here, we were able to take the floor plan from the former uh, building that was in the Coleman Royal Family Building and overlay it on the site so we can get a good understanding on how that building was laid out uh, since it was demolished over the uh, 60s, 70s. Uh, we also took a number of uh, shots from the same perspectives that we had from uh, historical photos. This is a shot looking to the north and west of what was formerly the G. Dawson Coleman Homestead Mansion. And you can see how that mansion uh, would have fit into the landscape. But this is also, we can use these same perspectives as some part of the historic interpretation that we plan to, uh, to install at the number of different wayside, which we'll get into later as part of its historic and terrible blue trail. Uh, this is a <coughs> shot of the, the, what the carriage house is today and what it looked like before the, uh, you know, the more recent renovations and the removing of the, the cupola at the top. Uh, this is the John Penn Brock Mansion site, which is at the, at the western end of the park, also the, the site of uh, this is the B. Dawson Coleman, which is a little bit to the uh, west of that, located near the tennis court in the center. And you can see how that building would have laid on the site. And the uh, final mansion site that we have here for is the, uh, it's actually the Horace Brock Mansion, which is at what is now the uh, eastern end of the existing carriage house parking lot. This, there are still some remnants of the former guards so you can look back and see uh, that mansion site as well. Now, Peter uh, talked about the renovations to the carriage house and the historic court. So it's, it's really looking at that history. We've used that to 
create an organizing principle for the park, and, and we suggested focusing on what we're calling the historic uh, core, the historic core. And, and, and what you're seeing here is, is the uh, carriage house site, which is right here, and the enclosed uh, sort of wall courtyard behind it. Um, and the, the idea right now is you come into the park, of course, you have to go all the way around whether you want to or not. And one of the circulation changes we're suggesting is so when you come into the park, you can get, create a new driveway uh, at the end of the existing parking lot, and so you can get into a parking space and out of your car more quickly, and also that we relate to the use of this uh, carriage house, the redesigned the carriage house, the renovated use of it. Um, the, the other thing that we're suggesting is to relocate, relocate some of the pavilions to interpret the Brock Mansion, which is uh, which was at this end of the, of the site, uh, to create some informational kiosks, also to interpret the, the Homestead Mansion site, and connect it to the Ready House. The Ready House was a stable that, uh, as the name implies, the Bowmans had a horse and buggy ready to go 24-7 in case they wanted to take off somewhere at 2, at two in the morning. Um, and, 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 and the relationship between that building and the old mansion site's important. Also, uh, we suggested next to the children's garden, creating a new and expanded playground. The pl playground <coughs> right now is fairly minimal, and to create a, a, a playground that will attract kids from around the city, we think is something that's gonna bring mothers and children to the park and have them enjoy it more. Uh, create, and then creating some uh, additional uh, pavilions uh, into the park, it's a, it's a very popular use in trying to get some parking, uh, some small areas of parking near the pavilion. So as we take this diagram and translate it into a site plan, uh, what, we've, what we've suggested here is, this is the, the carriage house, and we'll talk about that in a little more detail in a minute. The carriage house we're thinking of as a community facility that could be used, a multi-purpose facility used for many things. One of the things could be event rentals, weddings, uh, parties, uh, to create income for uh, the continuing maintenance of that uh, building. Uh, and we think it could be a very, very popular facility. I mean, uh, it's a magnificent building. We want this renovated. We think it would be a very popular site for people to have events. There are lots of models for this type of use uh, in this area and across the country. Uh, so redesign the parking lot to make it more efficient. Uh, create a, a circular lawn area as, a, as an appropriate, as a, as a setting to the carriage house uh, with a new gazebo off to the side where you can have small, uh, performances or events uh, on that, you know, with seating on the lawn. Organize the circulation here uh, a little bit better because right now it's, the, the design of the park has really evolved over time without a master plan. This is the first master plan in 75 years ago. And so we're trying to organize these spaces. Uh, use that wall area behind the carriage house as a, a, a uh, an events plaza, whether it be for dining or flea markets or art shows, um, again, it could be uh, a, a really important uh, adjacent use uh, to the carriage house. Uh, you can see that the tree plantings just sort of emphasize some level of formality that we're trying to create uh, in, in space. And also, um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, create more of a connection further up to the, uh, to, to the <coughs> ready house and to the rest of the, the park area. This is a, an aerial perspective where you can see this maybe a little more clearly in three dimensions. Here again is the carriage house, the uh, exterior courtyard, uh, the circular lawn area with the gazebo pavilion, uh, the, the new road that would come up off the entry road and cut across so you can get right into the parking area, uh, the redesigned, more efficient parking area, uh, the uh, Forest Brock Mansion site, um, the Arboretum area, uh, and then the Coleman Mansion site. We made some suggestions how you could interpret the mansion site, and very simply, you could just do it by uh, a, a, a concrete at-grade foundation wall to show you where that mansion was with some interpretive panels, and you could get much more elaborate than that, certainly, but that we thought that's a good start. Uh, and a new and expanded uh, playground, and then the connection to the Ready House. What we are doing is taking out that parking across from the Ready House right now. It's a small parking lot, it's a dead end, uh, and it really, we think, disturbs that some of the historic core. So as you look at the space, this whole area becomes 
a, 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 a use area that focuses on the carriage house. Of course, if we use a carriage house for a multi-purpose facility, we have to move the maintenance facility that Craig uh, uh, uses so well to another site. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, uh, so we're really trying to create an appropriate setting for the, the, the major building, and we think the, one of the focal points uh, of the park. Here's a sketch just looking from the back of the exterior courtyard to show you what a reception might look like in a restored building. And again, this is really a lovely building. It could be a magnificent site, and uh, hopefully this, this uh, will stimulate other ideas and, and, and encourage you to dream a little bit about what this place could be. We think it could be a really magnificent facility. When we look at the interior of the building, uh, it's, it's a pretty simple uh, uh, layout, and, and, and what we're looking at in most of the spaces is a dining, assembly, multi-use, uh, could be used for a number of things, and that, the specifics of that will evolve over the years as you're able to raise money to renovate the building and use it uh, for something besides storing a lot of it. Uh, we also in included here one of the one of the big um, uh, 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 emphasis of the plan was to create uh, some level of, of uh, museum quality exhibit about the Coleman family because they did have a huge influence, as you know, uh, through through their in industrial uh, work through the whole area. And so we've shown one room as maybe the permanent exhibit room, a museum quality room that would be climate controlled, uh, where there could be uh, permanent exhibits. Uh, through, through the rest of the building, we think you could do interpret panels, which wouldn't be actual artifacts, but still could tell the story of the Coleman family and what they did uh, in the area. Uh, this is just an elevation of the carriage house. And then our architect, Dale Prince, has recommended that if you go in now, there's a second floor, uh, and to remove that second floor so that this, this whole central space becomes uh, one space uh, it has a very interesting structural design uh, that's really reminiscent of a, of a King Post Trust bridge design. It's, it's a magnificent space, and we think a very dramatic space, and one that people will just want to be in uh, once it's opened up. And if it's great right now, it's going to get even better when this whole clear story uh, gets uh, you know, exposed and opened up. Also, this is the uh, gatehouse at the entry. And our architect has suggested to just, as funding allows, to um, redo the, uh, I guess it's aluminum and vinyl siding right now, and we understand why that was done. But you know, the original, the original look of this was quite different. And, and uh, whether it's wood or even cementitious shingle, which is very durable, uh, we think it'd be possible to get back more towards the original look because this is. Uh, an iconic building uh, as you uh, come into the park uh, and, and experience it. The interpretive strategy, working with a firm called Interpretive Solutions, we've, we've developed an overall interpretive strategy, which I'm going to start on and then Brian's going to take you through. Uh, and really the the emphasis is this, this is a very unique place. Uh, the park, uh, the former family estate, and the ground that was below it, which is now uh, partially developed as the Aspens, was, was, was really a very unique and one of the first of its kind facility in the area in terms of manufacturing. Uh, so we think it's an important story to tell. And the story of the Coleman family really tells the, the story of social forces of people and economies, and it really is a very important story in the, in the history of the Industrial Revolution in Industrial America and what we became as an industrial uh, player uh, in, in the world. And, and we've identified uh, several primary themes. First of all, the architectural legacy of homes. Throughout the area, uh, they were instigators of a lot of the great architecture that you have. So we think that's an important story. Uh, social change and mobility, gaining fortunes, losing fortunes, uh, the all ups and downs of the family and what they went through and uh, how, how they retained their power in the area and their fortunes, I think is very interesting. And, and what they did to the business and the economy of the area, 
I already mentioned the industrial growth uh, in America, which is important. Also, the, the, the use of Pennsylvania's uh, natural resources. Uh, politics certainly uh, enters in always in, in every situation. And, and then, then this the case study of the Coleman family itself and, and uh, the legacy that they, they've left for the area. So I think all these are themes that could be uh, developed. Uh, Brian, you're going to take us through the uh, experience. As uh, Peter DeJustice uh, spoke to many of the committee members at our last meeting uh, a week before Thanksgiving, yeah, the, the historical elements of the park can really contribute to the visitor experience and also help to organize uh, people as they enter to the site uh, in, in a number of ways. Uh, the three parts of this, this visitor experience are first the, the visitor welcome and orientation and how people arrive to the park and perceive the park for the first time primarily through signage and, and other information that's posted uh, within the park. Uh, also, other interpretive strategies that will help to tell that story are the, the implementation of an interpretive loop trail in addition to and working with the existing nature trail. Uh, there's also the opportunity, as uh, he had mentioned earlier, to provide even additional interpretive exhibits within the permanent uh, artifact room of the uh, carriage house. Uh, the first part of this being the visitor welcome and orientation, we've identified three uh, primary arrivals in uh, The first is the, the absolute the entrance to the park. And we feel that there, there's a great opportunity to you know, provide some initial orientation uh, through signage, as well as you know, addressing the, uh, the, uh, the gates as you enter the park. Uh, we're having adding to the, the existing walls out there as part of the uh, entrance improvements, which we'll touch on in a bit. But the, the first location is the park entrance, which is probably the most important. Uh, the other second or the second arrival area would be the uh, carriage house parking lot. Because uh, people would, if they're not using the western part of the park with the ball fields or the amphitheater, they would pull in and arrive at the carriage house parking lot where there would be information and additional historic uh, interpretation as well as navigation information so people can find their way through the park uh, for not only to look at the historic artifacts but also uh, where the recreational facility may be located. And that same thing would apply to the third primary arrival zone which is uh, adjacent to the, to the ball field and the amphitheater. The next element or opportunity for interpretation is the implementation of this interpretive loop trail. Uh, one of the things we've learned from the park user survey and, and many of the results we've received thus far, as well as through the, the state of Pennsylvania and the DCNR conducting recreational surveys, is that walking facilities, uh, loop trails, are one of the most highly sought after facilities in, in parks because it provides uh, people a, a safe place to walk free from uh, vehicle or uh, vehicular circulation so there's no conflict. Uh, what we're proposing here, in addition to the nature trail, which is the same thing through here, uh, which goes through the woods and may be a lot more difficult for most people to navigate, or you know, elderly or younger people pushing uh, maybe their, their baby strollers and such, we want to have a continuous uh, asphalt smooth paved sur surface throughout the park that, that people can use at all times. Uh, and, and along with that, we would be locating a number of historic interpretation points that uh, refer to as waysides. Uh, the first of which would be at the, at the west, and these aren't in any particular order, but they were just 
and most of it's going to be multi-purpose space that will be open to the public. But it's also to, to use some of the artifacts that are presently at the Historic Society uh, to have a, a museum quality uh, room. And, and we, our architect has suggested it happen in, in, in one of the corners of, of, the, uh, of, of the mansion, um, or the carriage, excuse me. Uh, another thing that we've recommended in the plan is the creation of a model. And this is just an illustration from another a museum exhibit. And, and the model could be uh, from a very basic topographic model uh, to something that's very high tech. And, and our, our, our thinking is certainly initially, uh, if the model goes forward, it would be something uh, you know, uh, three-dimensional, uh, an, an architectural model to show what Mount Lebanon, uh, the Coleman family homestead looked like uh, in its heyday, which I think is an important piece uh, of that history. Also, uh, it's, uh, this is just a, an example of a topographic model. Uh, but also, today, with computer technology, this is, a, a, this is a, an illustration developed uh, just using uh, AutoCAD, which is a, a very standard program in architecture using the SketchUp add-on. And it'd be possible to create, uh, very inexpensively, a, a, a three-dimensional uh, illustration of Mount Lebanon for a relatively small amount of money that can be displayed on, let's say, a big flat screen TV. So there are lots of options with how uh, the history is interpreted within the carriage house in this exhibit room or in some of the other rooms. Certainly something like this could be on a, on a big screen TV. It doesn't have to be in the artifact room, certainly. And, it, and, and you can, this, this is something where you can zoom in on all different angles and, and, and get next to the buildings and look up at the buildings and, really very flexible and you can even create a, a sort of a walkthrough and you've all seen these uh, on websites where you just sort of walk through the site uh, and again that's something that can be done uh, very economically to tell an exciting story. Also the legacy of the, I mentioned the legacy of the architecture that the Coleman family inspired. These are just a few examples uh, that the Coleman family had one, in, one way or another influence uh, over time. Brian also mentioned, you know, the, the, the higher tech, and it's becoming less high tech today applications, whether it be a, a web-based tour, whether it be something you, you dial in on your cell phone or on a smartphone. Uh, this, again, is something that can be done very inexpensively, uh, and, and people can take a tour. You can have several tours that could be downloaded, uh, several themes, uh, and, it's, and it's, again, it's an exciting way that people can experience the history of the site without uh, beating them over the head with it. Uh, it's something that people can go in and select to do, and it adds a whole other dimension 